Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you and your family are doing well today. My name is Justin Peters. I want to thank you for watching this video. And if you have seen any of my other videos, you might notice that the background has changed a little bit. It has indeed because I'm in a new office now that we're trying to get set up. Home office, but we're still trying to get this set up. So that's why things look a little bit disheveled. We're making progress, but not there yet. So um, at any rate, this is a video that I'm doing. This is kind of an update video on Benny Hinn's so-called repentance. You might recall that last year, specifically September 2nd of 2019, Benny Hinn made a lot of waves in the evangelical world when he said that he no longer believes some of the things that he has taught, specifically dealing with prosperity theology, this give-to-get theology, and he repented. He corrected his own theology, he said. And I did a video last year talking about this and showing how he has not repented. Well, this is an update video to that, and I want to show you that he has indeed not repented, not at all. And I'm going to show you that he is still teaching uh, give-to-get theology, prosperity theology. He's still teaching that, and he is still airing fake miracles. In fact, uh, please do watch this video through to the end because I'm going to show you some video footage that I myself took at a Benny Hinn crusade uh, just a few weeks after his so-called repentance. I'm going to show you that he's still airing fake miracles. So um, this is kind of fresh on my mind because uh, there's another well-known figure in the Word of Faith movement, Todd White, who in recent weeks has also repented. Undoubtedly, Benny Hinn and Todd White are the two biggest names in this movement that have so-called repented, offered some kind of a, a repentance of things that they, uh, erroneous teachings that they say that they have uh, taught in the past and they, they're repenting of that. But I want to show you that this is not real repentance. So I'm going to do this video first on Benny Hinn and Lord willing, in the next week or two, we'll have a, a follow-up video on Todd White as well. So, uh, just as a little refresher for you, this is what Benny Hinn said on September the 2nd, 2019. And I will tell you now something that is, is going to shock you. I think it's an offense to the Lord. It's an offense to say, give a $1,000. I think it's offense to the Holy Spirit to place a price on the gospel. I'm done with it. I will never again ask you to give a thousand or whatever amounts because I think the Holy Ghost is just fed up with it. If I hear one more time break the back of debt with a thousand dollars, I'm going to rebuke them. I, I think that's buying the gospel, that's buying the blessing, that's grieving the Holy Spirit. That's about all I will say. If you are not giving because you love Jesus, don't bother giving. I think giving has become such a gimmick, it's making me sick to my stomach. No, I think it's time... We say it like it is. The gospel is not for sale. And the blessings of God are not for sale. And miracles are not for sale. And prosperity is not for sale. Sounds good, doesn't it? Sounds encouraging, doesn't it? Well, it sounded very good and very encouraging to a number of people. This made big news in the evangelical world. A lot of magazines ran articles on Benny Hinn's so-called repentance, and Benny Hinn did a number of interviews. Mostly he did interviews uh, with people within his own ministry and or own family. Uh, he did do an interview with Charisma Magazine with Stephen Strang, and uh, they talked extensively about this. And, and so um, a lot of people really encouraged by this. And, and even some people in my own soteriologically reformed circles expressed a lot of hope and encouragement by the things that they heard Benny Hinn say. Uh, just a few days after Benny Hinn's big announcement, 
I put up a video on my own YouTube channel talking about why I was skeptical about this um, for a number of reasons, not the least of which is that Benny Hinn has done this before. He has repented on at least three other occasions uh, in his ministry of, of preaching prosperity theology. So this was not his first rodeo at um, quote-unquote repentance from the prosperity gospel. We've seen this before and it didn't last. And so I was very skeptical, but I also talked about what this would look like in Benny Hinn's life if it was in fact real repentance, that this would bear real fruit. And um, one of the primary fruits that it would bear is that Benny Hinn would shut his ministry down because if this is real repentance, then he would be very, uh, very eager to confess and admit to people that he has been lying, that he has been falsely prophesying, that he has falsely claimed that God has spoken to him when he's not, and he's been exploiting the poor, the sick, the desperate, and the widows for personal financial gain, and he has been airing fake miracles, and he's been doing this for nearly 50 years of uh, so-called ministry, and that um, he would realize that if this was real repentance, and he would shut his ministry down because he would understand that he is not qualified, biblically qualified, to be teaching the gospel. So uh, a lot of people took me to task for saying these things, you know, even some people within my own circles. I think of one lady in particular, boy, she really attacked me on Twitter. And um, of course, she's she's been blown about by the social justice winds of doctrine. And so um, folks in that, that have been blown about by that movement aren't, aren't uh, exactly exercising a lot of discernment, but that's another conversation for another video, maybe. But um, at any rate, for the careful observer, even for the not so careful observer, there were clues within this short segment. Now, everything I'm showing you here initially is is just about, uh, it's taken from about a four minute long span in an otherwise very long and rambling kind of sermon, which Benny Hinn is, is known for. Uh, but even within this short four minute span where he talked about so-called repentance, there were very clear clues that this was not real. For example, uh, watch what he said here. And again, this is, this is all within just about a four-minute span. So Steve Strang was in, in my wedding. We go way back. And he's already asked me, said, are you ready to make it public? I said, well, not totally. Because I don't want to hurt my friends whom I love who believe things I don't believe anymore. So this was not a conviction that Benny Hinn just came to that night on September 2nd or even the day before. This is a conviction that he claims he has had for at least two or three years at the time of, of this recording. And Stephen Strang asked him, Benny, are you ready now to come out and tell the world this? And, and you just heard Benny Hinn say, no, because I I have some friends who still believe this and he doesn't want to hurt his friends. That's our first real clue, concrete clue, that this is not real repentance because Benny Hinn realizes, he claims that he realizes what he has been teaching on prosperity theology was wrong and yet he continued to preach it. He continued to teach this to millions of people around the world because he didn't want to hurt his friend's feelings. Well, what about God's feelings? What about, what about the honor of Christ? You see, that was not as important to him as what his friends thought. What Jesus thought of this was not as important to him as what his friends thought of this. And there's just no way around that. In fact, he says much the same thing here. This is an interview that he did with Michael Culianos. Michael Culianos is Benny Hinn's son-in-law. Uh, Michael Culianos is married to Benny Hinn's daughter, and uh, they were doing a, uh, Michael Culianos interviewed Benny Hinn about this so-called repentance. And watch what he said here. This is just, uh, oh, two weeks later. This is September 17th of 2019. And, 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 and they hear these promises that are not biblical. You're going to get this much in this many days. Well, how many people do you know that ever got a hundredfold return in seven days? Or whatever. 
in a week or a month or whatever. That's the problem. Would and sadly, God is I, putting his finger but, but, on the motive. Yes, but I must yeah. say this. I must say this. I said those same things. Okay, dear ones, I've got to interrupt here for just a minute because Benny Hinn says that uh, he himself has taught these things. Yeah, th that's quite the understatement. Not only has he taught these very things that he now claims are wrong, but he has taught them on literally thousands of occasions. And I'm not being hyperbolic when I say that, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Uh, I don't even have to offer you video proof of him teaching these things. It would like me be like me uh, offering video proof that the sky is blue. I mean, he is. everybody knows this about Benny Hinn. It is, he has taught this for decades on literally thousands of occasions. Uh, nobody questions this, and at least nobody that has any amount of intellectual honesty questions this. But uh, Benny Hinn has painted himself into quite the corner here because not only has he taught this on thousands of occasions, but for many of those thousands of occasions, he has claimed divine unction for teaching these things. In other words, he claims that God speaks to him, instructing him to tell people to give him money, sow a seed into his ministry so they can reap a harvest. So how is it that he is now telling people that what God has instructed him to do for all these many, many, many years is now wrong? You see the problem he's created for himself. So God cannot be the problem. God is perfect. So therefore, Benny Hinn, A, either does not hear from God the way he claims, or B, well, that's obviously true, but B, he is intentionally lying about hearing God speak to him. So Benny Hinn has claimed, I mean, it's just routine, even to this day, routinely claims that God speaks to him and, God, and he hears God speak to him very clearly, just as clearly as you are hearing me speak to you now. Benny Hinn claims to hear God speak to him. So how is it that God has been telling him to do something for nearly 50 years of ministry that is not biblical, that is not right. You see the problem Benny Hinn has created for himself. And Benny Hinn is about to once again blame others for his own sin. Because of pressure, I was trapped. I went to a certain place not long ago, and I ministered so powerfully on the Holy Spirit. People were healed and blessed. And the man who had me forced me into a position live that I hated being in. When I walked, I said, I don't like this. This is not me anymore. I don't want this. Because they trap you. It started uh, during the Crusades and uh, not much in OCC. OCC was very normal, just you take the tithe and you're done, you know, tithe offerings. Um, but the whole mentality uh, of the subject came up maybe late 1999, somewhere there, early 2000, when I would be invited to telephones. And to my shock, uh, they would tell me that I raised more money than anyone. But, but he, was, he was troubled by my, at that time, my understanding, maybe I would say, and stand on prosperity. Um, but I didn't really do anything about it. Because my, the, the, the people around me were very strong pro-message. And that went on for a while. So again, the reason that Benny Hinn taught this and the reason that he continued to teach it, even after he realized it was not biblical, was because other people were pressuring him into it. You see, he was, 
he was kind of teaching something against his own will because other people were putting pressure on him. Again, I come to this point. How is it, Benny, that you teach something that you know is wrong? You claim to love Christ. You claim to fear him and serve him, and yet you taught something knowing full well that it went against Scripture, and you did so because other people were pressuring into it. The obvious question is, with whom do your affections lie? Uh, who is it that you fear, truly? Do you fear God, or do you fear man? It, the only conclusion that one can draw from this is that for all of these years, that he, he claims that he, even after he began to realize that this was not biblical, uh, that he was more fearful of man and wanted to please man more than he did God. So uh, now watch this clip. This is going to probably surprise you. Uh, I don't know how many people watch this interview, but but listen to what he says here as to as to whom some of his closest friends in the ministry were. This will surprise you. And that's really when people begin to say, uh, you know, to me in a very sweet way, privately. Uh, what is it I believe? And people don't know this. Some of my, some of the closest friends I had at one time were all Baptist preachers. This bishop, bishop may actually shock you. Uh, Charles Stanley came and spent the whole day with me in California when he went through his divorce. And he was, uh, I, I, I will never forget the day I spent with Charles Stanley. Uh, that's one of the sweetest people on the planet. And uh, one of the greatest men of God alive is Dr. Charles Stanley. I was, I was amazed, amazed by his knowledge of Scripture and the Holy Spirit. It was, uh, I, I, would, I would tell everyone here uh, to really listen to this man on TV. Charles Stanley is the real thing. Uh, Jerry Falwell befriended me. And uh, gracious man, very gracious man. Bill Bright was my friend. I would have lunch with Bill Bright here in Orlando every month. People didn't even know that. He, he actually preached for me. And Tim LaHaye became my friend. And uh, they, some of them brought that up. They said, now Benny, do you really believe that stuff? They would say. And uh, they loved uh, everything else but that. You know, they, they would, you know. I bet that kind of surprised you to hear, did it not? I would imagine that most of you would assume that some of Benny Hinn's closest friends in ministry would be guys like Kenneth Copeland or Jesse Duplantis or Bill Johnson or some, you know, some word faith in AR heretics like those guys. No, uh, he, he said actually some of the, his closest friends in ministry were Tim LaHaye, Bill Bright, uh, Jerry Falwell, who's of course deceased, and um, Charles Stanley. Charles Stanley. Now, Benny Hinn clearly has uh, some kind of, of, of affection for Charles Stanley, but uh, I, I tell you, you know, and, he's, and he says that he admires him so much and he's, he's the real thing. Uh, I, I've got a number of concerns, theological concerns with Charles Stanley, but he would he would never be thought of in the word faith camp or anything like that. And in fairness, he's not. But I, I tell you what, for Charles Stanley to have that kind of access to Benny Hinn, he should have he should have rebuked Benny Hinn. He should have said, "Benny, you are bringing reproach on the gospel. You are falsely prophesying." You're claiming that Jesus is speaking to you when he is not speaking to you. Of course, Charles Stanley believes that Jesus, God tells him to where to go get his uh, Thanksgiving Day turkey. I'm not exaggerating. But, uh, but you know, Charles Stanley should have known. I mean, my goodness, if you can't tell, if you can't tell Benny Hinn is a false teacher, my goodness, I mean, you, you have no business being behind the pulpit, but uh, I, I thought that was uh, I was I was surprised to hear that, and and I thought that was very telling because Charles Stanley absolutely should have said Benny, you got it, you're a 
you're a heretic. You're, you're a false prophet. Shut it down. That would have been the most loving thing to do for Benny Hinn, but that's not what he did. And we see that Benny Hinn is blaming other people for his sin. It was all of his friends' fault. It's the pressure of being on telethons and the pressure to raise money. It's, it's, it's everyone's fault except his. And blame shifting is a telltale sign that genuine repentance has not been realized in that person's life. If you blame someone else for your sin, and you have not come to a place of repentance. And that is what Benny Hinn has been doing. He has been blaming other people. It's other people that put pressure on him. His friends put pressure on him. And the telethons, the pressure to raise money, it's it's their fault. It's That is a telltale sign that repentance has not come. But dear friends, as if that were not bad enough, that Benny Hinn blames other people for his sin, Watch this clip, same interview. Look who he blames here. Um, but then the, 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 the change, I mean, in my real life, in my real heart, sometimes I would go home and think, well, mm, you know, is, my, is, is this really me? Is this? But I wasn't sure. And about two and a half years ago, it started. Sometimes God takes a long time to wake us up. I don't know why. Someday I think I'm going to ask him. Dear friends, that is unconscionable. And I really have to work at, at, at my own restraint here because of how utterly egregious that statement was. Benny Hinn says that he has come to this realization uh, two, three years ago, and, and he says, I don't know why God waited so long to reveal this to me. I, I think one day I'll ask him. He just threw God under the bus. It's not enough that he blamed others, other people, for his sin. He literally just blamed God, it's God's fault that he did not show him this sooner. It's, it's God's fault that he has been teaching this heresy for all of these decades. It's God's fault. It's God's fault that he has been exploiting poor people, sick people, desperate people. It's God's fault that he has been telling widows that if they will send him money in TBN, if they will send him money, that God will bless them. It is God's fault that he has been telling sick people for all of these years that if they have cancer, if they have a sick child, and they will just send him money. And, and remember, the bigger miracle you need, the bigger monetary seed you had better sow. So people who have been sick, they've got a sick husband, a sick wife, they've got sick children, and they hear this from Benny Hinn, and they hear Benny Hinn say that God is giving him the unction to teach these things, and so they shell out money that many of these people don't have, and they send it to him who is living a lifestyle of the rich and famous, driving fancy cars and flying in private jets and staying in $20,000 a night hotel rooms, and he's going to blame this on God? He's blaming God for this. If there was ever any doubt that Benny Hinn has, maybe this repentance isn't real, that right there seals the deal. That is the furthest thing from repentance that you could possibly have. I want to read to you a passage from 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Paul talks about the difference between a worldly and a godly sorrow. He is confronting the Corinthians in their egregious sin via this letter that he, he, sent, by, he sent by Titus, but all the detail of the setting there is too much to go into for this video. But Paul confronted the Corinthians in some egregious sin, and Titus came back after he delivered this 
painful letter to them. Titus came back, met up with Paul, and Titus brought good news to Paul that they had repented, that the Corinthians read the letter, or their, Titus probably read the letter to them, and the Corinthians were convicted by Paul's confrontation of them, and they genuinely repented. And Paul writes about it here in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Paul says this, he says, For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance without regret, leading to salvation. But the sorrow of the world produces death. For behold, what earnestness this very thing, this godly sorrow has produced in you. And watch what he says here. What vindication of yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what longing, what zeal, what avenging of wrong. Now, it's beyond the scope of this video to, to give a full exposition here. But what Paul means here when he says, what vindication of yourselves and what avenging of wrong. Basically, Paul was saying this. The Corinthians were so convicted by their sin via this letter that they wanted to vindicate themselves, not justify themselves. In other words, what, what the Corinthians were doing, they wanted, they wanted the whole world to know. They wanted everyone around them to know that they had truly repented of their sin. The Corinthians used to be known for their sin. Now they wanted to be known for their repentance. And they did not make any excuses. They wanted to vindicate themselves. They wanted everyone to know that they had truly come to repentance. Uh, what avenging of wrong. They wanted to make their sin right. And they blamed no one but themselves. They owned their sin. They made no excuses for it. And now they wanted to be as far away from that sin as they could possibly be. They wanted, to, they wanted everyone to know that they had come to a genuine place of repentance and they blamed no one for, but themselves for their sin. If you ever hear someone say, yeah, I'm sorry I did this, but here's why I did it, then you know that person has not come to a place of repentance. If you blame someone beside yourself, if I blame someone beside myself for my sin, then that's not real repentance. That is the furthest thing from repentance. And Benny Hinn not only blames other people, he blames God. He blames God for his sin. I, that jarred me when I saw that. That is not repentance. That is the furthest thing from repentance. He promised to meet our needs. That's in Scripture. But when I hear a man today, and I did hear it a lot, you know, a lot. Yes, he certainly did hear it a lot. And he heard it from no one more often than he heard it from himself. But I digress. So this amount and claim this promise, it's not in the Bible. Why do you say that's not in the Bible? I mean, it's not because... You cannot put a price on a promise of God. And of course, that statement is in and of itself correct. The problem is, is that Benny Hinn continues to this day to teach a give to get theology. Sow a seed so you can reap a harvest. If you need a miracle, then give him money. The only thing that has changed is that he no longer attaches a specific dollar amount. In other words, I don't think he still says a thousand dollar seed, but he still teaches this give to get theology. If you need a miracle, if you need a breakthrough of whatever kind in your life, then the way to get it is to send him money. And lest you think he's no longer teaching this, watch this. This is just from a few days ago as of this recording on August the, um, what are we here? August the 19th. This was just from a few days ago, August the 15th, 2020. This is what he said. Watch this. Today, today, you may be facing a real serious problem. I don't know who is facing what. All I know is I felt by the Lord to share this message with you today. Here's what you need to do. You need to make a vow to God and say, Lord, I want to do such and such for you. Please bring me out of this problem. 
you will see God move on your behalf real fast. Because in every case, even in the Bible, it was instant. Why don't you do that? Why don't you make a financial vow to the Lord right now while I'm talking to you? If you're facing a problem, and watch what God will do with you. You cannot put a price on a promise of God. Father, I come in agreement with every person today who has a challenge financially, or maybe not financially, something, Lord, in their life or their business. Wonderful Father, in Jesus' name, what you did for Hannah, what you did for David and others in Scripture, what you've done for me, do for them, Lord, that they'll, they'll see a miracle happen quickly, supernaturally, in Jesus' mighty name. And God's people said, Amen and Amen. No, I think it's time we say it like it is. The gospel is not for sale. And the blessings of God are not for sale and miracles are not for sale and prosperity is not for sale you know you can right now go online our website and just say I'm gonna make a vow today to the Lord and you don't have to give any details of what you need but just sow a seed as a vow to the Lord and you may even want to say Lord I'm going to give maybe a, like a part of it now and a part of it later as you, as you see God move because I've done that too in the past. I'll never forget that with Bunky. I did that with Ronald Bunky when I made the Lord a vow and he came through for me because sometimes you don't have the whole amount you know, that you're vowing to give to the Lord. So you, you can do that too. Just go to BennyHinn.org and do it now or on the platform you're watching me on or just simply text the amount BHM45777 BHM45777 This is not an offering, this is a vow, it's a big difference. Make the vow now and then obey the Lord and sow that seed and watch what God will do with you. Lord, I thank you for the miracle coming to each one of them. And the blessings of God are not for sale, and miracles are not for sale. It will begin this weekend. It will happen this week. And, 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 and they hear these promises that are not biblical. You're going to get this much in this many days. Well, how many people do you know that ever got a hundredfold return in seven days. It will begin this weekend. It will happen this week. In Jesus' mighty name for your glory, as you've done for me, do it for your people. Amen and amen. I want to hear about your miracle. And miracles are not for sale. Let me know what God has done for you by just sending me an email to Pastor Benny, BennyHinn.org. Pastor Benny, Benin.org. Rejoice, your miracle truly is on the way. Bye-bye. Dear ones, I wish I had been wrong about my skepticism regarding Benny Hinn's so-called repentance back on September the 2nd, 2019. But clearly I was not. He has not repented. I would love nothing more than for him to repent. I genuinely want Benny Hinn to come to true repentance from sin and true faith in the real Lord Jesus Christ, but clearly that has not happened. He continues to teach the same thing today about seed faith, sowing seed to reap a harvest and giving him money in exchange for a miracle. He continues to teach the same thing today that he has taught for all of these many years, nearly 50 years now. He's teaching the same thing. Not only is he teaching the same thing about seed faith and financial prosperity, he is also continuing to air fake healing miracles. I'm going to show you just a, a brief video clip from my own iPhone camera. In fact, 
September 23rd. Uh, remember, the, the, some of the clips we were just watching were from September 17th of 2019, but on September 23rd, 2019, just literally a week after he did that interview with Michael Kulianos, he held a miracle crusade at his office there in California, and I attended it. I went to it uh, with a friend of mine named Josh Comstock. He and I both went in. And I'm going to show you just a little bit of uh, video footage that I took while I was in the Crusade audience. Forgive me for the poor quality. In fact, I'm going to turn the, the iPhone on its on its side. But uh, anyway, it might make you dizzy. It might feel like you're on a roller coaster. But, but as, as this clip begins, I want you to watch. Because I, I, as I was sitting there, I noticed this couple to my left. Uh, the gentleman was in a wheelchair, and the woman who I presume to be his wife, but I found out later was his fiance, as you'll see in just a minute. But uh, she was sitting next to him. And friends, I've, I've been to enough of these crusades. I think now I've been, that was my 18th Benny Hinn crusade that I've been to. I've been to enough of these that I can, I can look around and I can kind of get a feel for who's going to get up on the platform or who's going to get them in front of the television camera to claim a miracle of healing. And as I was watching this couple, I thought that lady is going to get up because he's in a wheelchair. She was not, but I saw her rubbing her neck. Uh, just, just watch this and then I'll comment. Another neck injury, 16 years ago, a car accident. Tonight, she was able to move for the first time without pain in 16 years. That's a long one. Long time to have pain in the neck. How bad was the, was the pain, my dear? It was really severe, and it was just tormenting me. And I had become addicted to pain medication. I've been off for years now, but still so tormented. And I just felt a release. Just move it. Lord Jesus, thank you. So earlier in the service, I'm, I'm sitting in the back and I'm watching this couple. And I assumed at the time to be husband and wife. Of course, later found out they were just engaged. But uh, the lady was rubbing her neck and the man in a wheelchair. And I thought to myself, you know what? That lady's going to get up on stage and the man is not. I've been to so many of these crusades. I know how this works. And sure enough, later in the service, when the healing time began, sure enough, Benny Hinn began calling out these just kind of generic conditions. And here comes this lady walking up. And, and uh, she said that she's had neck pain for 16 years and will move your neck. And, you know, and so she does this number. Charlatans do this all the time. This is not a real healing, dear ones. This is... These are psychosomatic healings. There, there's basically, generally speaking, there's two different kinds of so-called healings. Psychosomatic, mind over body, psycho, mind, uh, soma, body, mind over body, the placebo effect. And then there are organic healings. Now, psychosomatic healings happen all the time. When you're in a closed environment, 
with uh, emotionally charged music and everybody's kind of, they're singing, they're all of, of thinking about the same thing and they're all, you have this kind of group think, group dynamics going on and you're expecting miracles to happen, you're expecting something to happen, then, and you're wanting it so badly, and you can make yourself feel better for a little while. And for a little while, you do feel better. This is well documented in a, a lot of different studies, the placebo effect. You can convince yourself that you feel better when in fact there's been absolutely no physiological change whatsoever. Placebo effects, psychosomatic healings, mind over body, they happen all the time. But organic healings are different. Organic healings are healings that cannot be explained simply by a temporary rush of adrenaline or endorphins. Uh, organic healings would be like a, an amputee growing a new limb. That would be an organic healing. An organic healing would be someone who was born blind, instantly having 20-20 vision. That would be an organic healing. An organic healing would be somebody like me being healed. I have cerebral palsy. And, um, you know, no matter how happy I get, no matter how good of a mood I am in, uh, you come up to me and you take away my crutches, down goes Frazier. Dundee Ali's trainer right next to me is saying it. You may hear him. Down goes Frazier! Down goes Frazier! Right, because I, I, I can't be healed of my cerebral palsy just because I'm in a good mood. So psychosomatic healings happen all the time at Benny Hinn Crusades and other faith healing crusades. What you don't see are organic healings. Now watch here when the lady tries to tell Benny Hinn about her fiancé who had a stroke and is in a wheelchair, the guy that you saw in the video, watch Benny Hinn's response when she tells him about her fiance. Huh? My fiance had a stroke three months ago and he's in a wheelchair. We're gonna believe God for him. Yeah, that, 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 that anointing is coming on. Ah, it's, come, it's coming in, my dear. Uh, what happened to the gentleman? Breathing you. issues, and tonight, breathing... He completely blew her off. Totally blew her off. No, oh, your fiancé had a stroke a few months ago, he's in a wheelchair, and he's here tonight? Oh, bring him up here. We're going to, I'm going to lay my hands on him, and God's going to heal him. No, none of that, because Benny Hinn knows the difference between psychosomatic and in organic healings. He knows the difference, and he didn't want that guy up on camera. I've seen this over and over and over and over. I myself, at uh, Benny Hinn Crusade a number of years ago, tried to get up on the platform. Actually, I was doing a project with uh, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. I think that film is still on YouTube somewhere. But I actually tried to get up on stage, and uh, Benny Hinn's goons uh, stopped me because they could they could see I was obviously handicapped and I was trying to get up on stage. But uh, one of Benny Hinn's, a couple of them actually, one man and one woman came up. And they stopped me, and the lady said, uh, "Sir, just believe for your healing. Just believe for your healing." Now that's no skin off my back because I knew that Benny Hinn was a fraud, so it's not like it hurt my feelings. Just illustrated the obvious exactly what's going on. Same thing here. He didn't want this guy coming up on the cameras because he had a stroke. He's in a wheelchair. Benny Hinn, there's nothing, knows that there's nothing he can do about that. Uh, that would require an organic healing, which simply does not happen at Benny Hinn Crusades. Benny Hinn is a fraud. Benny Hinn has not repented. So, dear ones, I'm doing this video not just to convince you that Benny Hinn is a fraud and a charlatan, although that is part of it. Uh, I'm also doing this video to illustrate to you how much repentance, the doctrine of repentance, has been diluted, has been diminished 
by modern evangelicalism. So many people, even some people in, in our circles, my circles, were expressing such hope and such optimism and, and just so excited that Benny Hinn had repented. This is not repentance. Real repentance bears fruit. A genuine godly sorrow, per 2 Corinthians chapter 7, comes, number one, when God grants it. God must grant that to a person. And if he does grant a genuine godly sorrow that leads to genuine repentance, that person is not going to make excuses for his sin. He's not going to blame someone else. He's certainly not going to blame God. And there will be real tangible fruit. There will be a marked change in what that person does, and what that person teaches. We have seen that Benny Hinn has not repented. He is blaming other people. He is blaming God for his sin. He continues to teach the exact same things that he has always taught, and he continues to air fake miracles. There has been no change. This is not repentance. And Lord willing, as I said, in a week or two, I'm going to have a follow-up video on Todd White's so-called repentance. And Benny, if by some chance you are watching this, I want you to know that I do not hate you. I said this in my first video about your repentance last year. I do not hate you. I do hate what you are doing. I hate that you are exploiting the poor, the sick, the desperate, and the widows for personal financial gain. I hate that you are teaching false doctrine. I hate that you are falsely prophesying. I hate that you are bringing reproach on the name of Christ. But I do not hate you. I want you to come to repentance. Benny, confess your sin. Confess your sin before God and confess your sin publicly before men because your sin has been, a, has been very public. Public sin requires public repentance. Confess your sin and if, God, if you truly have godly sorrow over your sin, if you, if you truly grieve over your sin, then you will be very willing to confess all of this and you'll be very willing to shut your ministry down because you will understand that you are not qualified to be preaching. You're not qualified to be teaching the gospel. You need to shut your ministry down, empty your ministry coffers, give it to doctrinally sound ministries or doctrinally sound churches, join a doctrinally sound church, sit in a pew, submit yourself to the teaching and the leadership and the oversight and the accountability of biblically qualified elders, sit in the pew and learn. That would be real repentance. That would be evidence of God's grace in your life. Okay, dear ones, thank you very much for joining me watching this video. Until our next time together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with you all.